because of that emotion. And in some cases, women will respond better to God than men will. Remember, it was Moses' wife that saved the life of her children because Moses was going to be too, too what he thought was compassionate and he didn't, he didn't, uh, he did not, uh, that's the word I'm looking for. He didn't circumcise his two boys. Now, some of you, you don't know the Bible enough to know what I'm talking about, but, but just keep coming. This is, how, this is how you learn the Bible. He didn't circumcise his two boys, and the Bible says an angel met him in the road and was going to kill him. And that mama had enough sense. She had enough love for her babies. That she took them two babies and she circumcised them and took the foreskins and threw them down at the feet of Moses and said, you're a bloody man. She saved the life of her husband and her boys. Now, brothers and sisters, there's a lot that I don't have time to explain this morning because I'm in a warfare with the devil. Let me tell you something. When you go through basic training, they some of you... You've been through basic training. You know more than what I'm talking about than what I'm saying. But they learn how to yell out. You learn how to receive orders on the fly. And you respond immediately. Because in the, in the, in the heat of battle, your officer does not have time to stop and explain to you why they're shouting the officer, uh, the order to you that they're shouting. Afterward, you can sit down and explain. This morning, I'm in a little desperation mode. I'm, I'm here to see God do some victories around here and some healings around here. And so I don't have time to stop and explain all of this. I will later, but just go with me on this journey. And the schematics, the schemes of the devil start early to where... I didn't even watch it. Some, somebody sent me a video. Uh, not, it just made me too sick to watch. Where there's a bunch of school kids. And there is a man dressed up like a woman. A tra- we used to call them transvestites. Crossdresser. And he was dressed like a stripper. And the teachers are cheering him on. And little 7th and 8th graders are cheering him on. And they're doing this for therapy in a grade school here in our state. And you want me to just sit here and be silent about it and say, there. And some of you parents, are you so intimidated that you won't get furious and go confront a teacher and say, if you do that again, I'm going to call the law on you and have you arrested for child abuse. But we become so convoluted and we're so intimidated to stand up for what we know is right because this is way down the road from this scripture in 1 Corinthians where it makes it clear that there ought to be an identity, a distinct separation between a man and a woman. A distinct, a woman's not supposed to wear that which pertaineth unto a man. For years they made fun of us preachers preaching about women wearing men's apparel. But now we're seeing the end result. Women are supposed, do you know what the universal sign of a woman is? A woman's bathroom all the way around the world. I know, I go all the time. The universal sign of a woman's restroom all around the world is a woman in a dress. Did not even nature itself teach you. Come on, sisters, let's quit letting the devil lie to us. I'm after the devil this morning. I'm being the disciple that God called me to be, and I'm preaching. If you want power over the devil, then you have to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, and he will give you power over the devil. 
You can't just cherry pick what you're going to believe from him and then discard the other because you don't like it. If you want power over the devil, I don't have time to go the previous eight chapters here in Luke, but they slept with him. They ate with him. They forsook all. In fact, you will read it right here. Jesus told them right here in chapter 9 that if you have forsaken father and mother and left me, you are my disciples. Doing the will of God is not popular. You know why we have problems with homosexuality in our world today? Because they blended the lines. They've disregarded the word of God. And that's why we're having the problems that we're having with, with boys that think they're girls. And girls that think they're boys. And I'm ashamed to say that there's been preachers that loved your attendance and your money more than they loved preaching to you the truth. And so they just let it go on. And I don't know that they agreed with it. They just didn't have the courage to get up and preach it. What are you talking about, Brother Elder? Power. I drove by, I drove by a huge, huge Amazon warehouse the other day. Man, it's quiet in here. Brother Richard, I may need to have you play the music, you know. Kind of feel like I'm in, you know, when Saul was tormented by the devil, he had to have a musician come in. <laughs> Being facetious, of course. Drove by a huge, huge Amazon warehouse the other day. How do you know it was an Amazon warehouse? Somebody tell me how I knew it was an Amazon warehouse. What? The symbol. What's the symbol look like, Brother David? It's got the arrow with the swish. I drive by their trucks all the time. You know what it is, don't you, Zach? There you go. Everybody knows what Amazon is. That's the brand. That's the tattoo on the building. Oh, Jesus, help us. That's the markings on the building. Now look, some of you know where I'm going. So let me let me put a what what happened before Calvary? Ain't nothing we can do about. The blood of Jesus Christ covers all that. But after you come to Jesus, there ain't no sense you still acting like you did before you got saved. You see a UPS truck. How do you know it's a UPS truck? The brand. Did you know, now I haven't checked lately, but for over 40 years, the women in America voted every year that UPS drivers, this sounds stupid, but, I, but I'm trying to make a point here. That women in America voted UPS drivers the most sexy men in America. Check me out. Don't take my word for it. Now, I don't, I don't get all of that. I'm not a woman. Thank God I'm not a woman. Have no intent on being a woman. Don't have any desire to be a woman. I'm reveling in the fact that I'm a man. So I don't get that. But it had a lot to do with the branding. It had a lot to do with the high standard that the UPS Corporation demanded of their drivers. Standard. There's that word we hate. Standard. I don't hate it. I love it. When the enemy would come in like a flood, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a 
standard against it. I'm, I'm not having problems with that, but I'm, I'm here to help you this morning in your battle. How many of you want power and authority over the devil? I want power and authority. I want power and authority over sickness. I don't have time to get there today, but there's some ways that you can change things in your life and help you have authority over sickness. So, the branding makes a big deal. Go to, Ex- Le- go to Leviticus, and I don't know the exact script, the reference, but in Leviticus chapter 19, it talks about piercing your bodies, marking your bodies, and all of this has connections with worship of dead people. All of this is connected to the underworld. All of this is connected with demonic activity. In fact, today it's becoming very popular for women to do permanent makeup. You know where they got that idea from? They got that from the Egyptians. The Egyptians who worshipped their dead ancestors. And there was a connection with these women that did this. And it was for them to be beautiful. Their definition of beauty was to be connected with dead people. Your definition of beauty is to be connected with Sodom and Gomorrah. Most of the potash, that is the base for your makeup, comes out of the Dead Sea. So Sodom and Gomorrah, which is on the bottom of the Dead Sea, is still having influence in women's lives today. And again, sister, why are you letting Hollywood and the multi-billion dollar makeup industry define you beauty why I have a personal poll that is going on with men in this church it's not a scientific poll because it is not a double blind research because I still have both eyes but I have asked every man that I know of in the last 40 years do you like makeup and every one of them have told me no I hate makeup Makeup's not a man thing, brothers and sisters. Makeup's a woman thing. It is a competition. It's been a long time since I preached like this. Why are we letting Hollywood tell our ladies how beauty is? They have to weigh so much. They have to have this, this kind of measurement up here and this kind of measurement here. And this kind of measurement down here. And they have to weigh so much. And now it's got in the medical world. If you're 30 pounds overweight, you're obese. Watch. It's going to affect your health insurance. You watch. They're going to penalize you if they can get away with it. They're already doing it in China. You can read and you get social points taken away. And you get social points that are given to you on your credit score. They'd like to do that everywhere. So that they can mold you into their little society. Did you find it? Leviticus, you shall not make any cuttings or piercings in your flesh for the dead. Nor print any marks upon you. For I am the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I'm here publicly apologizing to you today for any preacher in this city that gives you permission to disobey the word of God. And I'm, I'm telling you not to listen to them, but to listen to the word of God. Why, Brother Elder? Because we need victory in Pueblo, Colorado. And the way we're going to get victory in Pueblo, Colorado is to align ourselves with the word of God. We're going to be disciples of the word of God. And through the word of God, he'll look at his disciples and he said, Behold, I give you power over the demons. I give you authority over sickness and the demons. Notice he did that to his disciples. He didn't give that to everybody. (laughs) 
Identity is a big deal, brothers and sisters. The Lord is telling you, don't let the devil tag your body. No, you're not. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In fact, let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19, is it? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God. Ye are not your own. Ye are bought with a price. Is that what the Bible says? Therefore glorify God in your body. I'm not tagging my body. This body does not belong to a demon that wants me to tag it with some naked woman. This body doesn't belong to some spiritual entity. This body doesn't even... My pastor tells this story one time about... He had a buddy when he was younger. He had the... I think her name was Lisa. Tattooed on his belly button, right over his belly button. He said when he was a young man, it was Lisa. Now it's Lisa. <laughs> Some of you will get that. <laughs> or whatever her name was. Now let me tell you something. I belong to Jesus Christ and to him alone. I am furious right now because there's a bunch of lawless people that keep tagging this church. And what we're going to do, we're going to put fence around it so they can't tag it anymore. I'm going to put 15,000 votes on it. <laughs> so when they touch that fence, they'll realize this is not your property. This is God's property. You ain't tagging it around here. So, Brother Elder, you need to be merciful. I am merciful. But I want to tell you, if you don't have any more respect than to tag the house of God, then somebody needs to remind you, this is the house of God. This isn't some little play toy for you to get your little jollies off of. So what's wrong with this city is they've, they have just poo-pooed every disobedience and made it all right. It's permissible. That's really cute. No, it's not cute. If we're going to get victory over the devil, then we submit ourselves to God. The Bible says to submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. But the way that you get that power is by submitting yourself to the Holy Ghost. And when we submit ourselves to the Holy Ghost, then he begins to work for us. Now, I know I went a little longer this morning, and I really would like to clarify this even to a greater degree, but I can't because I don't have time. Just keep coming. We'll deal with this. We haven't dealt with... All the connections that Satan uses to have avenues into your life. You ought to throw every kind of Hollywood movie out. Get it out of your life. There, uh, yeah, yeah. There's two guys kissing in front of you, even on the romance movies now. And they're trying to make it look like that it's okay. No, get it out of your life. I'm going to tell you something. You ain't ever going to convince me it's okay for two guys to kiss on each other. And if you're waiting for me to get comfortable with that, I ain't ever going to get comfortable with it. You call me whatever name you want to call me. The reason why that is repulsive to me is because that's repulsive to the Holy Ghost that's in me. If you don't like that, I have an alternative for you. Come to the altar and repent. And when you get full of the Holy Ghost, you'll have the same feelings in your life that I have. Because God hates that kind of behavior. If you're waiting for me to change, I can't change. That's the Holy Ghost. The Bible says it's an abomination. An abomination. You keep going that way, and it's going to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. Pretty soon, they won't only, you watch, what? because Sodom and Gomorrah are a type to us. Pretty soon, it wasn't just the fact that it was permissible. When those two angels came, they got violent about 
molesting those angels. Let's use a more common word. Raping those angels. Because the more you give into your flesh, the more that you allow your flesh to reign in your life, the more it takes over and becomes demonic and becomes submissive to those spirits. Instead of submissive to the Holy Ghost. Not me, I'm going to be submissive to the Holy Ghost. So Brother Elder, what about that? Well, thank God we don't live in the Old Testament, we live in the New Testament. But I still believe that if we'll live according to God. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord thou art my rock. Is that what he says? I will say of the Lord he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. And him will I trust. Verse number 3. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. There it is. You live for God, he'll deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Fowler, And from the noisome pestilence. And he shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Buckler is a little shield. His truth shall be thy big shield and thy little shell. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Why? Nor pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Read on. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh unto thee. What are you preaching about? I'm preaching about power over the devils. I'm preaching about power over sickness. I'm preaching about authority where God gives us, uh, where we have victory over this stuff. I'm preaching about God giving us victory in our life. I'm preaching about God giving us victory in our marriages. I'm preaching about God giving us victory in our sex life. I'm preaching about power over pornography. I'm preaching about power over the filthiness of this world. I'm preaching to you, brother. I'm preaching to you, sister. This isn't some pipe dream. This is the promise of God to those that will embrace him. I didn't finish it. For he shall give his, is that where we're at yet? He shall give his angels charge over thee. You guys are too quick on the draw up there. Now you got to find it all over again. Messing up the cadence of my sermon here. Praise God. Where'd we stop? A thousand shall fall at thy right hand. Ten thousand at thy left. But it shall not come nigh thee. Next verse. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord. Did I miss it? Did we miss it? He shall give his angels charge over thee. To bear thee up. Lest thou dash thy foot. Where's that at? Which verse? He shall give his angels charge over thee. Eleven. I didn't get there. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. Say, Brother Elder, this is, this is as bad as Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, God sent those angels to protect Lot. And when those men tried to do that trash on those, the angels of the Lord, the Bible says, smote them blind. Uh, and they were, they were groping around. They couldn't, even, they couldn't even find those people when they were escaping right through their midst to get out of there. And, and, and the deliverance of the Lord came with them. I'm preaching about power over the enemy. I'm preaching about power over devils. I'm preaching about power over sickness. And I'm almost done. Then after this, they go up into the Mount of Transfiguration, which is way up north. And over on the Assyrian-Lebanon border, they go up the Mount of Transfiguration, the highest mountain in, in Israel, the only mountain in Israel, the only mountain in that whole area that actually has a ski slope, ski lodge, some 9,700 feet high, I believe it is. And there Jesus is transfigured in front of them. 
Only three of the disciples go with him. And the uh, the other disciples stay down below. And evidently while Jesus and, and the three disciples were up on the mountain, there was a man that comes to these disciples that are left behind. And the Bible, in one, in one chapter it says he was a lunatic. Which means that the lunar cycles of the earth and the moon, in those days they thought that, that a full moon caused people to go crazy. The New English King James, the New King James says that he had a bout of epilepsy. Uh, there's another couple of translations that says that he had an epileptic fit or seizure. Whatever the case was, the father brought this man, this boy, to the disciples and they could not heal him. They could not cast out the devil. Now this is kind of confusion to me. I, I, I don't understand all this because in, in parts of the scripture it says they were healed and in parts of the scripture it says they were cast out. I don't, I don't get all of that. So Brother Elder, then that shows the consistency of the word of God. No, that shows the inconsistency of my ability to have the revelations that I need. I believe if I'll keep seeking God, he'll give me the answer to it. See, that's whether you have faith or not. If you have faith in the word of God, nothing is able to cause you to doubt the word of God. You just keep, you just keep digging. God will give you the answer. You just keep digging. You just keep digging. It'll happen. That's the difference between those that have faith and those that don't have faith. That's why the Bible says that, that the word of God is a savour of life unto life and death unto death. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants you to find a place where you can have a controversy with the Word of God. There is no place where I have a controversy with the Word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Isaiah 55, it shall not return unto me void. What are you doing, Brother Elder? I am combating the unbelieving genetic of our world today. I am combating the faithless genetic of our world today. That's what's wrong. People get so smart and they read 50,000 commentaries of everybody else's opinion. It doesn't matter what everybody else's opinion is of the Word of God. The Word of God is the Word of God and it's all that I need I know that sounds simple to you, but I've seen a lot of miracles happen in my life, and I've seen a lot of miracles happen in my friend's life because that's the attitude and that's the position that I've taken. Just because I don't understand it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Time is it? I don't know. Oh my goodness, it's almost one o'clock. Jesus help us. So now you can't see this unless you've been there. My mind's eye at the foot of Mount Hermon is a place called the gates of hell. This is what Jesus is talking about. It's still there. Now the water. This, actually, the gates of hell is where the Jordan River starts. That is the, that is the supply. It doesn't run like it used to, but the Jordan River is still very powerful there. It comes out of this huge cave. It has a mouth. Oh, and, and, and the old pagan people believe that that was where you entered into the place of the dead was black and millions of gallons of water running out of it and so they leave these disciples down here near or around the gates of hell and they go on up the mountain and then they come back down now, Jesus in Matthew chapter 16 has already told his disciples the gates of hell. 
shall not prevail. Because in, in Matthew chapter 17 is this same story. And, and he comes back down off, off of the Mount of Transfiguration. And here is this little guy, teenager, whatever he was. And every now and then he would have these, whatever they were, seizures, conniptions, fits. And every kind of diagnosis that had been given, that could be given, had been given on what was the problem with this kid. They've been to doctors, and the doctor said, it's this, it's this. Now, why are you telling him this, Brother Elder? Because you have to have the background for the statement of the father. The father's heard every kind of diagnosis that he can hear. Now, if this is your son, you, you'd want every kind of remedy that you could find. You'd try it to cure your son. And he's at his wit's end. And he brings his son to the Lord, and he's bewildered. This is after God gives them power, and they could not heal this boy, or they could not cast out the spirit, whichever book you're reading, whether it's the Gospel of Matthew or the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of Luke. Y'all still with me? I'm almost done. I'm almost done, but the Holy Ghost is not. And, and so, when Jesus and Peter and John are walking back down the mountain, they encounter this man who kneels at the feet of Jesus and worships him. By the way, Worship is also translated as therapeo, Acts chapter 17. So healing comes from your worship. It's therapy. Some of you that are struggling at night to sleep because of illnesses, instead of playing a video game, why don't you get on your knees and worship? See what God will do and help you. And so he comes before the Lord and he says, I brought my son who is, in one place it says, grievously vexed with the devil. And this, whatever this is, it casteth him into the fire. I really do not believe it was a seizure because I think that it, it tried to destroy this boy. I'm inclined to believe it was a spirit of suicide. But whatever the commentaries say, we don't really know. None of us know. Because it was destructive. It tried to kill the boy. Tried to destroy the boy. And Jesus, the Bible says that he, he sighed and he, and he said, How long shall I suffer thee, thou Faithless, faithless generation, Greek word, geneo. Thou faithless genetic. A whole group of people that grew up and were born and passed on one to another. Their faithlessness, their conversation passed on their faithlessness. Their behavior passed on their faithlessness. Their, their, their places that they win passed on their faithlessness. The music that they listened to passed on their faithlessness. Uh, the, the words that they said passed on their faithlessness. Uh, their recreation encouraged and resourced their faithlessness. That's why some of you, you don't understand, Brother Elder says, when you go on vacation, go to church. 
Don't just lay out in all of the faithless and you hear stuff all day long and, and, it, and it drives against your faith and it worries your faith and it, 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 it begins to cut and bleed your faith out of you. Find somewhere where your faith is renewed. Find some resources where your faith is renewed. Get some music in your car where your faith is remused, or, 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 or renewed. Get some thoughts in your mind. Quit listening to all the podcasts that want to destroy your faith and turn on the Word of God that renews your faith. Uh, Quit watching trash that destroys your faith uh, and watch Word of God. Watch preaching. Watch music that will restore your faith. A faithless genetic. How long shall I suffer you? And the Bible says that he looked at one man, said, do you believe? And he said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I'm not going to rehash that. I preached on that a few weeks ago. Go back in the sermon archives and it's there. But there are places in your life that you can have faith in and other places that you haven't grown to the place where you can believe God. And here's the key to that right here. If that's where you're at today, then you know what you need to do? You need to do what this guy did. You need to come back to Jesus. Because some of you, you're waiting on us to help you. And I don't know how to explain this. There's some things we can do. We have power. We have authorized power. God has given us power. But there are some demons that only go out by prayer and fasting, Jesus said. In fact, that's this very account. The disciples later on said, Lord, why could not we do this? And he said, because of your unbelief. There's only some things that come out by prayer and by fasting. I don't believe he's talking about some sins. I'm talking about the the unbelief. The only way to get that unbelief out is by prayer and by fasting. And when we pray and when we fast, that it bypasses us and gets it directly into the hands of the Lord. I don't know how to explain that, church. uh, But I'm telling you, if you want, I don't know how to explain that to some of you that are wanting victory over uh, addictions in your life. Let me tell you what you need to do if you have addictions in your life. You need to pray and fast. You need to pray and fast. I know your therapist isn't telling you that, but your Holy Ghost is telling you that. There's some things that only come out by prayer and fasting. Let's stand. I know this is a different message. But I was up early this morning, four this morning, talking to God about this. Talking to God about you. Talking to God about how can I how can I encourage someone to turn away from the world? Because some of us are trying to hang on to things that are actually avenues that bring the power of that sin into our life. Those are avenues that that sin has constant flow into our life. And the Lord says, repent. What does that mean? That means turn away. Cut off that resource. In this case, to that unbelief. Cut it off. Cut off the resource to the excuses that you've created in your life that it's okay that I'm like this the Lord understands of course the Lord understands but the Lord wants to do more and understand He wants to give you victory He wants to give you healing He wants to bring deliverance to your life listen brother listen to me Don't make a pact 
with your mind that it's okay for you to have pornography in your life. Don't do that, sir. Don't say, well, I'm a man. You know, after all, that's just, no. That is a resource for hell to have influence in your life. You say, well, I'm not hurting anybody but myself. Yes, you are. You don't even realize the impact that it has around you. Listen to me, brother. I'm on your side. Every man's got to fight this battle. This isn't something that nobody, that, that you're isolated. That's another lie that the devil's told you is that you're isolated and nobody else understands. No, every man in this world is fighting that battle because Satan has made it so prevalent. You used to have to go down a seedy road, dimly lit road, and you had to look and make sure nobody's watching, and then you had to walk in this filthy old place. And Now, you don't have to do that anymore. Just a couple clicks on your phone, and you're back where Satan has resources into your life to destroy the power of the Holy Ghost and to and to besmirch the influence of God's purity and virtue and power in your life. But I'm telling you, brother, fight it. Fight it. Come to God. Don't one of the first things you got to do to get victory over any kind of sin is you got to get it out in the open. Quit hiding it. Quit letting that circle of shame keep you isolated so long. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but the Holy Ghost is talking to me right now. I'm telling you, it will be a battle till Jesus comes, but it's worth fighting, brother. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's worth fighting. I mean, I may even be preaching to sisters. Over 30% of American ladies now are addicted to pornography. Fight it, sister. Fight it. Get Get it out of your life. You don't want it. You don't want it passing on in your genetics to your children. How do I do it? it? Must be the Holy Ghost out of mouth of two or three witnesses. See what I mean? Look how the devil wants you to sit there and resist what God is reaching and trying to do. What are we doing today? We are, we are aligning ourselves with God. That's called repentance. We are aligning ourselves with God. Right now, we are fighting the battle. God, help us in this service today. Help us in this service today. Help us, help us, help us, help us. Somebody, will you help me pray right now? Will you help me pray right now? Will you help me pray? Come on, sis. Come on, brother. It's, it's the, the fight is worth fighting. The Lord's going to help us. Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. There never is a time where we can do this without the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on saints of God will you help us help us help us today God your spirit is going to break yokes in this house today your spirit is going to destroy sickness today your spirit is going to bring deliverance the lives of people today.
Let's lift our hands and thank you for the move of the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. Can we just thank him? Hallelujah. Can we lift our voices to him and praise him right now? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Jesus. I wish I could tell you that when this revival starts, place, starts taking place in your life that everybody around you is going to be happy. I wish I could tell you that, but to finish the story of the Gadarenes, when Jesus finally got there and there was the demoniac that was there, Jesus healed him. The man came tearing out of the caves, broken chains all over him matted, filthy hair. What do they call that when they never comb their hair? Dreadlocks all over the place. Wild. Dirty. But he had enough sense, the Bible says he fell at the feet of Jesus and worshipped. And Jesus rebuked the demons out of him. And somewhere in that ship they found clothes to put on him. And the Bible says he was clothed and in his right mind. And you would have thought that the city would have loved that. But the next verse you read, the Bible says that the city is pleading with Jesus to get out of there. Because he killed their swine. He didn't kill their swine, the devils killed their swine. But I want to tell you, the Bible says, Behold, there is an effectual an open door that is set before you but there are many adversaries but I don't want you to fixate on the adversaries I believe the Holy Ghost wants you to fixate on the open door that is set before you how many of you realize that for the for the maybe the first time but the few times in our lives that the Holy Ghost is doing special things and that's an open door so don't let the enemy try to just talk you out of it. Let the enemy just tell you how bad it is. No, it's not bad. It's victorious. Just keep on fighting the fight. Keep on coming. Keep on believing. Keep on, keep on being faithful to the house of God. Let's all stand and let's give him a high praise today. Can we, can we praise him like he's worthy to be praised before we leave this house? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We love you. We praise you. We love you. We thank you, Jesus. We love you. We worship you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Spanish Outreach this afternoon at 2.30. God's going to be moving in a mighty way here this afternoon. God bless you tonight. 5.30 prayer, 6 o'clock. Church right here. Love one another. You are dismissed.